to it one God, amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of Bauna. And today we often, oftentimes we hear our Lord's teaching us how to love God. Today the focus is a little bit different. The focus of the message of today is how we ought to love others. And it's influenced by the Holy Spirit. That's why it's, this gospel's reading is, is done during these, these days. If we allow the Holy Spirit to dwell richly in our hearts, then this is, this is possible. So the Lord doesn't apply this teaching to our family members and our friends because that type of love, those who love us, should almost be instinctual. It should be a natural response. It should be. What the Lord is talking about is much deeper than that. So how do we treat those with whom we don't share a deep relationship with? And even more importantly, how do we treat those who treat us harshly and unkindly? I'm sure each one of us has, has encountered difficult people. Sometimes they're the people that we work with. Sometimes the people that we go to school with. The way that our Lord expects us to treat these people is completely original. He tells us to do something that's it's, it's remarkable. Even if the person that we're dealing with is our, is our sworn enemy, even if the person has made our lives miserable, even when they have truly hurt us, love them. The gospel reading of today is a reminder that the values and behaviors of a Christian, the son and daughter of Christ, has to be drastically different in the values and the behaviors from the world around us. We are called to be strangers compared to those in the world around us. We're called to be like aliens in a foreign land. And I think nowhere in the entirety of the Gospels is this more on display than today's reading. To love your enemies. Oftentimes we see our Lord acting and speaking in a ways that turn the world upside down. And this is no exception. Our Lord Christ doesn't tell us to do things that are easy or they come naturally to us. He tells us to do something that's very difficult. Something that will that will work for us in our that we have to work for in our current state. Have you ever known someone that loved their enemies? Can you even think about that question? Do we have an example of that? Or does it seem like a foreign concept to each one of us? When we're angry with someone or when we feel like someone has hurt us or done us wrong, how do we react? Think about how we drive on the freeway. How do we react when someone cuts us off? How do we respond? What kind of words are we using? And that's just one simple example. If, if you will pray for your enemies, peace will come upon you. But when you can love your enemies, then a great measure of grace of God has dwelled in your heart. And the flip side of that is true. When you revile your enemies, it means that there's an evil spirit living in you bringing evil thoughts into your heart. Though in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts or good thoughts. In our world, it is the most difficult thing to imagine that we can love our enemies. We're taught to, to hate everyone who stands in our way. In fact, the world that often claims to preach tolerance quickly shows its true colors. It's hatred for anyone who's, who even has a different opinion that is not from the popular opinion or not favorable by the majority. Do we react the same way? Do we react the same way that the, the world does around us? Or do we react as sons and daughters of God? Do we really actually love our enemies? And I believe... It's a fundamental question for any Christian to answer, not just the people wearing black. For anyone who claims to be a Christian, this is a fundamental question for them. If I truly know and love God, and I feel His mercy, and I feel His love in my life, and I see His generosity towards me, although I am a sinner and I don't deserve anything, this living relationship informs and illumines my heart and impresses in me Upon my being, a dramatic change. It, it changes how I deal with other people. 
not just, just those who I easily love, like our friends and our families, hopefully, but those who are humanly impossible to love. At least we think so. Instead of seeing people around me as enemies, I begin to see them as brothers and sisters. Instead of condemning them and hoping that God judges them, I begin to pray on their behalf. Can you imagine? And ask God to show mercy on them and to reveal himself to them. What a blessing. The answer isn't that you try to understand the concept with your mind. That's a very difficult thing with earthly wisdom. It doesn't make sense. The answer is that you grow in your prayer life. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Who comforts us and strengthens us when we struggle. Prayer is our way to accept God's invitation to enter into this love and to open ourselves to the repeated encounters of his powerful love. The Holy Spirit teaches us to love because he is love. God is love. And we might ask, how much love does God have for his enemies? Our Lord says, as you wish that men ought to do to you, do to them also. This teaching has the powerful powerful impact on our lives. It can change and transform us. But like all teachings of our Lord, it only happens when you put it into practice. Every one of us has a certain pet peeve. Every single one of us has an annoyance that are triggered by other people's actions. Every one of us expects a certain standard of treatment. And the genius of this teaching is that it takes the standard of treatment that we would love and appreciate for ourselves and it forces us to apply it to others. It's amazing. If you don't like it when other people get angry with you, then don't get angry with others. If you don't like it when others yell at you, then don't yell at others. If you don't like it when others lie to you, then don't lie to others. If you would like to share if you would like others to share with you, then share with them. If you would like others to not speak evil of you and to gossip about you, then you should refrain from speaking evil and gossiping about others. If you want others to treat with kindness and respect, then treat others with kindness and respect. If you would like others to show you love, then show love to others. Simple as that. Each one of these principles points us to a very important fact. Every man, every woman, every child who has ever lived throughout all of human history is just as important as you are. How is this possible? Because each one is created in the image of God, in his likeness, in his image. So in fact, when we treat others in the way that we would like to be treated, we're actually showing an extreme reverence to God's handiwork. And then our Lord says, love your enemies. And I think it goes further than that. This is one of the primary ways that we as Christians stand out from the world by our practice of this radical love. We need it now, now more than ever. I think the rise of social media and this kind of culture, this online forum culture, has really stirred up political discourse to a very extreme level. Truth has gone out the window. All that's left is a search for power. And we have to take this seriously these days. We have to take these words of our Lord Jesus Christ very seriously these days. Judge not. Condemn not. We can't see people by their political orientation. We can't see people by their worldview, their ideologies. We have to see them through the lens of the cross. The cross allows us to make sense of everything because it highlights this love that God has for each one of us. Where did you read in the gospel? Or where did you hear that Christ only died for one group of people? Where was it said that Christ's death and, his, and the redemption 
only is for one privileged class of people. His love is universal for all of humanity, for all of creation. And he provides, he proves what he teaches by fulfilling it in practice. He tells us to do something that seems impossible to love our enemies. And then he shows us how to do it by patiently accepting to suffer and to be killed by the hands of his enemies. And, he, and through this suffering and his death, he did more than demonstrate his love. He poured it out in creation. He took what was evil and he redeemed it and made it good through his love. This is our only way forward as Christians. We can find that our Lord is sometimes unreasonable with us, so it seems. He's asking too much. Yes, I will love the people at my church. I will love my family members, my friends, those who are around me, but how can I possibly love my enemies? And the Lord answers us even while lifted on the cross. It was his love for his people and for his enemies that sent him to the cross. Since we want to be sons and daughters, I hope that we want to be sons and daughters of God, we have to imitate our Lord, even in this extreme teaching. As servants, we can't expect to be treated better than the master. And it's not a matter of whether or not it's possible to love our enemies. From the cross, we see our Lord telling us it is indeed possible. The proper question is not, can I love my enemies? The proper question is, will loving my enemies be easy? And the answer, it depends. It depends. It depends on us. It depends on our hearts. The way that we react to our enemies says a lot about whether we truly believe in God from the depths of our heart. In the Christian life, we don't act a certain way based on our feelings and opinions. We act based on our faith and our obedience to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. The point I'm trying to make is that whether or not I love my enemies is completely related to whether or not I understand what God has done for me. If I truly understand the economy of salvation. St. Ambrose said, what Christ said in the word, he proved also by example in everything. When he was on the cross, he said, in reference of, his, of those who were persecuting him, who were slandering him, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. So that he might pray for his slanderers, although he, can forgive and he could have forgiven them himself. The church shows us that one of the ways that we show our love to our enemies is to pray for them. We have to highlight this point. Prayer is one of the ways that we direct our love towards God and our love towards one another. When you're having a difficult time with somebody, family member, friends, those who are really out to get you, you have to ask yourself, when is the last time I prayed for them? When is the last time that when we were angry with, with someone or some group that I, I prayed for them with a fervent love? I'm, I'm worried about them. How could they be acting this way? What's wrong with them? What's going on? That was the example that our Lord gave us while in the midst of excruciating pain and suffering on the cross. How could it not be our example? How could it not be our example? One of the Eastern Fathers says, he who does not love their enemies does not know God. This is a very powerful statement. He who does not love their enemies does not know God. It's something we have to take very seriously. We can't put it off because we don't know when we're going to meet our Lord. And it's not easy, but it's possible with God's help, with the work of the Holy Spirit. So we always have to be asking God to help us love our enemies. By yourself, it's impossible. But with the grace of God, it's possible. Whatever we lack in our lives, we can request from God. and He gives generously, liberally. It says in St. James, in the Epistle of St. James. Life is too short. If the events of Abuna John really opens our hearts and our minds to the reality that life is very short, it's too short for hatred, 
is too short for grudges, is too short for false divisions. The devil divides, but only our Lord unites. Only the Lord grants us liberty, and this liberty gives us freedom as we're reflecting on the 4th of July and freedom and all these things. Only the Lord grants freedom. He grants us freedom from anger, from sin, from corruption. This is something that we should reflect on on the 4th of July. The Lord brought us such freedom through his love for us. Each one of us must live that by, by a rule of love. And it was demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord frequently teaches us difficult things. He forces us to go out of our way to do things that are completely unreal. And what we want to do is to lash out to those who lash out at us. We want to inflict pain to those who make us suffer. We want to ignore those who make our lives difficult. We want to mock those who mock us. When we act in these ways, we are acting naturally. This is our human instinct. But the problem is that our nature is defiled and corrupted through sin. Our Lord wants us to act not like children of the world, but like his children, the Father's children. So we see here what's so important. When we love others, we aren't treating them according to the way that we've been treated. We're treating them according to the way that God has treated us. So do we really believe in God's forgiveness? And we have to show forgiveness to others. Do we really believe in God's mercy? And we need to be merciful to others. Do we really believe in God's love? And we need to show love to others. The Lord isn't asking us to do something that's difficult. He's asking us to do something that we sh that should come naturally to us because we've received so many wonderful and good things and we deserve so very little things. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Oh,